I was married when I was 37 years old, but my wife was the worst. My family was quite poor, and although I received a lot of love, we struggled financially. I went to a university on a scholarship and used the knowledge I gained there to start my own company at the age of 25. I've been working hard on my own ever since. After 10 years, and when the business became more stable, I decided to hire a part-time staff member to handle the administrative work. My wife came for an interview, and she told me about her struggles as a divorced mother. I hired her immediately as I empathized with her experience. My wife was a hard worker when she started working for me. Although she had no previous work experience, she quickly learned and was able to handle everything on her own. Actually, at that time, my company was growing rapidly and getting pretty busy. Industry publications were requesting interviews, and from my wife's perspective, I must have appeared as an impressive person. How could I not be happy to be respected and respected without having to hide it? As time passed, my wife and I became gradually closer. Until that time, I was simply struggling to survive, and I had no time or energy for a romantic relationship. So my wife, who had a carefree and playful nature, seemed refreshing to me. During that period, my wife was working harder than ever, but she suddenly expressed a desire to get married. She started coming over to my place to help with household chores. It was almost like we were in a relationship. We spent weekends together, and sometimes her daughter came along. As her daughter started to grow fond of me, I became more and more smitten with my wife. One day, while we were living like that, my wife suddenly said, It's a ways to pay rent for a place where I only sleep. As a joke, I asked her, Do you want to live here? And she replied, Sure. Do you want me to? I never expected her to actually move in, so I was quite surprised. However, I opened up a room that was being used as a storage room and let her and her daughter live there. From an outsider's perspective, it might have looked like we were living together, but we didn't have that kind of relationship. I'm sorry, but I have a daughter. I understood her concerns and respected them, but she kept saying she wanted to get married. Looking back now, it was definitely strange. But as someone who had no experience with romance, I ended up proposing even though we weren't officially dating. I had never even kissed my wife, and she had not even said she loved me. But at that time, I was completely thrilled. My wife was happy to get married, but she said she wanted to quit her job once we were married. I was surprised because she used to be such a hard worker who loved her job. But she told me, I've always wanted to be a full-time housewife. So, I hired another employee and planned to get married as soon as the handover could be completed. The new hire was a handsome young man. My wife took on the role of training him so I was able to continue working outside the office as before. The new hire was quite talented and quickly became independent in his work. I told my wife that she didn't have to worry, but she kept saying, No, he's not ready yet, and was hesitant to quit. One day, when I came straight home from work, 
I found out my wife started working overtime. It's impossible to finish all the work while training someone. Although I felt sorry for her, I went to pick up our daughter from daycare and ate dinner together at a family restaurant. Spending time with my daughter was fun, but my wife was still fixated on the new hire, and there was no sign of us getting married. One day, I finally said, The new employee is ready, and we should get married soon. My wife became irritated and said nothing. In a moment of frustration, I said, All right then, let's forget about getting married. Sorry, but... Could you move out soon? I heard her say, Why would you say that? Don't you like me? But after a while, she suddenly said, Okay, let's get married next month. With that, our marriage was decided, and I told the new hire about it. He was quite surprised and asked, Huh? Were you dating her while you were the company president? He seemed a bit pale, which made me wonder, but with all the preparations for the wedding, I became busy and soon forgot about it. Eventually, my wife and I were able to get married without any issues. Afterward, as promised, my wife became a homemaker, but the moment she did, she stopped doing anything at all. She used to be such a hard worker at the company, and she used to do the housework, but now, she doesn't do anything at all. I wondered if I was just tired from working so hard all this time, so I didn't say anything. However, my wife, who doesn't even cook proper meals, started making me packed lunch boxes every day. The packed lunches were made for me, and the new graduate. I was so happy to have her make lunch for us, but I was curious why she was making two portions. I'm also making lunch for my daughter. Besides, the new graduate lives alone, and if he eats only at convenience stores or restaurants, he will not be well nourished, and money will be tight, right? She said laughing. I couldn't quite understand it, but I thought my wife was kind to care about the new employee as well. And I didn't say anything more, because I was afraid that if I complained, she might stop making us lunch boxes. But after a while, I started to get diarrhea every time I ate my wife's packed lunch. I thought it was because there was too much fried food, so I asked her to make changes. But the new graduate wants to eat a lot since he's young. She said and didn't make any changes. I thought, is the new graduate a higher priority than me, her husband? But it's true that the new graduate doesn't seem to have any problems eating the same lunch as me every day. So maybe it's just my own health that's the issue. I should have gone to the hospital sooner. But work was still busy and I couldn't find time to go. I ended up taking over the counter medicine that my wife had bought for me to alleviate my symptoms. Although my wife seemed to be somewhat concerned about me, it felt like she wasn't really taking good care of me. After some time had passed since her marriage, I started to become concerned about the lack of intimacy in our relationship. So I decided to take the plunge and said, We're married now, and I want us to have a child. However, my wife responded, Having a child is really hard both physically and emotionally. We already have a daughter, so we don't need another one. I was sad when she rejected my request. Hearing her response, I didn't know what to do. And since we were still sleeping in separate rooms, I couldn't do anything. Looking back on it now, she had said she wanted to be a housewife, but she had never told me she loved me. As someone with no prior relationship experience, I was blinded by my excitement and didn't see the red flags. 
I realized that my wife must have been after my money, so I decided to hire a private investigator. She seemed to have let her guard down completely, and a lot more than I expected came to light. What shocked me the most was that she and the new graduate were involved and had a child together. Since the new employee had mentioned having a girlfriend when he joined the company, I never thought to suspect him of having an affair with my wife. I regretted not gathering more information before getting married, but there was no use in despairing. I decided to divorce while the wound was still fresh. I continued to live as usual for a while to gather decisive evidence of the affair. But one day during lunch break, something happened. As usual, I took out two lunch boxes, but the new employee picked up my lunch box. It was usual for me to hand over the lunch box, but he seemed to be too hungry and couldn't wait. For a moment, I remembered my wife's usual reminder. Make sure you don't mistake it for someone else's lunch. Since the contents of both lunch boxes were the same, I thought it didn't matter and continued eating without saying anything. But suddenly, the new graduate said he had a stomachache and rushed to the toilet. I continued eating, thinking that sometimes strange things happen. But strangely enough, my stomach was fine that day. When I realized it, my spine froze. I understood the reason why my wife, who never did any household chores, only made my lunch. It was a shock to realize that my wife disliked me so much, but there was no point in confronting her with any evidence. However, I couldn't help but wonder if she was underestimating or just plain stupid. You ate the wrong lunch today, didn't you? I told you not to mix them up. How did you know? Did you ask the new employee? When I asked her that, she fell silent awkwardly and I almost laughed. On the next day, I stopped eating lunch with the new employee and began throwing away my portion. As a result, I felt lighter, slept better, and no longer had any stomach problems. So, I hurried to get a divorce. When the detective agency investigated and discovered that my wife and the new employee had made me ill in order to take over the company and possibly collect insurance money, I was shocked but had no regrets. My wife seemed to realize that I wasn't eating lunch anymore, so she began avoiding me and staying holed up in her room. But my daughter would come out on her own and say, I want to eat daddy's food. I wanted to divorce my wife quickly, but I didn't want to leave my daughter with such a woman. When we got married, I had adopted our daughter, so I was thinking that I could prove her mother was neglecting her. I might be able to take custody, but then something happened. On that day, I was on a business trip when I received a call from my daughter's kindergarten, saying that my wife didn't show up to pick her up and wasn't reachable. Sensing that something was wrong, I arranged for my daughter to stay extended daycare and headed to my company. As I had suspected, the office was in disarray and the safe had been opened. I had anticipated this situation and was relieved that I had not put anything in the safe. I picked up my daughter from extended daycare and went home. Her room was empty except for her daughter's clothes. All my valuables were in my room, which was locked so they were safe, but the kitchen and living room had been ransacked. I called the police to take fingerprints. I thought that if we could find his fingerprints, as a new graduate had never been to my house before, it would be good evidence. Later, the police took the new graduate and my wife into custody. It seems that the private investigator tipped off the police. In the end, nothing had been stolen. And since my wife left the new graduate into the house, it wasn't considered a burglary, but for the time being, it was enough to have both of them in custody. I was able to claim compensation from both of them and obtain custody of my daughter. It seems that my wife also used my daughter as a tool to get close to me. The new graduate doesn't want children, and raising a child takes time and money, you know? I'll give you my daughter. I felt angry at my wife's words. 
but I didn't argue back because I didn't want my daughter to have any lingering attachment to her mother. Currently, I'm doing my best as a single father. My daughter, who is now in elementary school, seems to have no desire to meet her mother and is living her life full of energy. As for me, I absolutely don't want anyone to know about what my ex-wife said, and I just hope that we can continue living a peaceful life like this. The following story is about the wife of a long-distance truck driver. My name is Luke. I'm a 38-year-old long-distance truck driver. Due to the nature of my job, there are times when I can only be home for one or two days a week. But on my rare days off, I make a point of spoiling my wife and showing her how much I care for her. Ivy, I love you. I love you too. Maybe it's because I'm tired from work, but just a kiss is getting me going. Aw, not yet. Why not? I can't wait any longer. Come on, don't be too eager. The night is long, you know. At this rate, you'll fall asleep right after we're done. Oh no, my desire is building up so much that I'm becoming selfish. Intimacy between husband and wife is about both of us feeling good together. In order to achieve that, we need to prepare ourselves properly. Hey, do you want to lick me like a little doggy? Yes, I do. I mean, woof woof. Haha, <laughs> good boy, good boy. Here's your treat. You waited so patiently. Now, go ahead and enjoy it. Woohoo! Ruff, ruff. It had been the appearance of a starving hunting dog, or perhaps that of a castaway stumbling upon a puddle of water in a vast desert. Right before my eyes was a lake, a clear and pristine oasis, overflowing with fresh spring water. What's more, beyond the thickly overgrown grasslands lay a premium ingredient, an oyster waiting to be harvested. It's amazing to think that such a lake could hold such an ocean delicacy. Nevertheless, one must make the most of the situation when given the opportunity. When it comes to a meal, my motto is to enjoy it until the very end. So let's dance and feast on these delicacies while they're still fresh. Huh? Uh, it stinks. What do you mean? Sorry to disappoint anyone who was expecting something sexy. Our love making ends here, I'm afraid. But please, hear me out and don't get mad. I want it to go all the way too. But it stinks. It's incredibly smelly. Ivy's oyster. Sure, the real thing can be a little fishy tasting when eaten raw. But Ivy's was a hundred times worse. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe it's just not going to happen tonight. Huh? Why not? You're usually more into it than this. Today, I just don't feel like it. What? But you just said it stinks. And the moment you got close to my channels, you screamed, It stinks and fell backwards. It's not like that. Maybe I'm just tired or something. But suddenly, I'm not in the mood. Either way, it's not a good sign. And are you laughing a little? What? No, I'm not laughing. I'm just feeling sympathetic. That's all. And it still smells, doesn't it? I tried my best to console Ivy, who was in shock and feeling distraught, and decided to be honest about the fact that her genitals had a strong odor. I was hesitant to speak the truth, unsure whether or not it was the right thing to do. But to be completely frank, it was already at the level of environmental pollution. Riding on a train, it was so bad that it could have caused a gas leak emergency throughout the entire carriage. Not just a person sitting next to her, your housewife, and nowadays, you can do most of your shopping online. So it's no wonder you didn't realize until now. What? Ah, oh, 
I'm so embarrassed. It's okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. There must be a reason behind the odor. If we can figure out the cause, I'm sure it can be treated. Really? Yeah, so let's go to the doctor's tomorrow. Don't worry, I'll come with you. And so, the following day, Ivy and I went to the gynecologist together. But what awaited me there was an even crueler truth than the odor coming from my wife's genitals. It's chlamydia, isn't it? Chlamydia? It's a type of infectious disease caused by a pathogen. Why did my wife get infected with such a disease? She wears a mask all the time, and she's always washing and sanitizing her hands. Well, the disease is transmitted through a sexual activity between men and women. What? But, sir, you don't seem to be infected. Forgive me for asking, but does your wife work at a nightclub or something? What? According to the doctor, the infection rate of chlamydia through sexual activity is 30 to 50 percent per encounter. It's important to emphasize that this is not the overall probability, but rather per encounter. If you engage in sexual activity once, there is a minimum one-third chance of infection. So, if you do it ten times, there is a 99.26 percent chance of getting infected. By the way, this disease can also manifest in the throat, not just the genitals. Since we engage in such activities, the risk for us should be doubled. By the way, if you get infected with the disease, does it show symptoms right away? No, there's an incubation period of one to three weeks. From what I've heard, the symptoms appeared yesterday, so it's likely that the infection occurred within the past one to three weeks. One to three weeks? Ah! If you're a perceptive viewer who witnessed my eagerness at the beginning, you might have already guessed it. But, actually, the period during which I lived a celibate life wasn't just the one week when I was working as a long-haul truck driver. In reality, I've been neglecting my intimate duties with Ivy for weeks. Even last week, and the week before that, for some reason or another. On the way back from the hospital, I asked Ivy about it frankly. Are you cheating on me? What? What are you talking about? Of course not. Then, why are you so flustered? Because you said something weird, Luke. I was just surprised. Oh, I see. Ivy's behavior is definitely suspicious, but there is no evidence that my wife is having an affair. On the other hand, I have to leave home again for five days starting tomorrow. And there's a chance the evidence could be destroyed before I even have a chance to look for it. However, my worries were unfounded. Because the culprit, the man who had an affair with my wife and gave her the disease, was easily found afterwards. Oh, hello there. Are you two out on a date today? Oh. Hey there, Ethan from next door. Are you heading to work now? No, I just finished my night shift and today is my last day. So I came to have a leisurely lunch. How about you? Ah, uh, gotcha. Well, we're just enjoying our day off. Hey, Ivy, you should say hello to our neighbor too. Oh, um, hello. Hello there. Sorry to bother you, Ethan. Can I ask you something? Oh? Yeah, what is it? You've been fidgeting around your groin for a while now. Do you have a niche or something? Oh, sorry. It's just a rash, yeah. It's probably a heat rash. <laughs> is Ivy also scratching her groin? Does she have an itch? What? Was I scratching? Oh no! I'm embarrassed to do that in public. Ethan? Yeah? How about having a tea at our place right now? We'll be your hosts. Huh? That's a bit. Uh, Ethan, didn't you say earlier that you just finished your night shift? It would be a bother, right? Come on. It's fine. Is there any reason why the three of us can't have tea together? Uh, no. Not really. Luke, 
Why are you suddenly saying such weird things? <laughs> then, just follow us silently. You know why I'm inviting you for tea, right? Yes. Apparently, chlamydia is a disease that is difficult to recognize symptoms of. But it seems that Ivy and Ethan are just more prone to noticing symptoms due to their body type. And their type is more likely to cause symptoms of itching and bad odor. In other words, Ethan from the neighboring room was the one who had an affair with Ivy. At first, both of them denied having an affair. But when I said, Then, let me ask around the neighborhood if there are any other people with chlamydia. They reluctantly admitted that they had been in a relationship since six months ago. Well, in any case, we've been living a life of hardly ever going out lately, and in this day and age where rumors spread easily around the neighborhood. It was almost certain from the beginning that Ivy's affair partner was someone close by. It was almost certain from the beginning. When I come back next time, I'll consult a lawyer. Pack your things then. Yes. You should also prepare for the possibility of being sued for compensation. Just so you know, we know where you work, so running away is pointless. Uh, understood. The tea party that day was enveloped in an indescribable tension and foul odor. And a week later, I submitted divorce papers to the city office and demanded compensation for adultery from Ivy and Ethan. It's like turning a blind eye to one's own wrongdoing or covering up a scandal. In the case of these two, they couldn't hide their foul genitals. Well, one could say that those two, who were rotten to the core both in their character and physicality, were a perfect match for the outcome that awaited them. Thank you for watching until the end.